Amazing. And we're live. 71. 71. Episode 71. Amazing. Yeah, that was <laughs> 71 episodes, 71 today, days. Today we have a special guest. Patrick. Yeah, we're joined by uh, Patrick, who is a filmmaker as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Our, first, our first filmmaker on the show. And I'm excited wow. for this. Well, yeah. I am honored. And, um, and I want <laughs> to say congratulations, man. 71 show, that's a lot. Congratulations. Thank, thank you, you, Patrick. Thank you very much. Yeah. So let us tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do. Well, I, I, I'm 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 a filmmaker, like you just said, but uh, I'm also I'm I'm first of all a screenwriter. You know, my focus is is script writing um, because you know uh, every good movie is come from a good script. That that's what I believe. So um, I started, you know, um, as as, as young as I was a storyteller, uh, telling, you know, stories to my siblings and, and family friends, and um, I discovered the ability. It just, you know, uh, I felt, you know, uh, it's a natural um, thing for me. So I kind of developed that and, and grow to be, you know, um, I, I started to write a TV show uh, when I was a teenager, and then I, I switched to regular movies. So that's what I would say that I am first a screenwriter. And then the movie director uh, came from later on after that. You know, I directed uh, my first film in Haiti and then my first feature film, two film in Haiti, first of all a short film and then a second a, a feature film. And then later on, I, I had to become an, an editor as well. So I had to edit my film because we didn't have the film school. Uh, to teach you how to do those things. So I had to find a way to, uh, you know, be able to, to express myself. But um, I have also a past in, in music. So, um, but, you know, I consider myself an, an artist, um, but, you know, a filmmaker, definitely, you know, um, that's my path, you know. So I made a number of films up to now, and uh, this is what I've been doing. And the film festival? Yeah. Yes, um, actually, we ended up, uh, well, I ended up getting involved in many other things in my life. Uh, in 2002, um, we started the Boston International Film Festival. Uh, actually, I, after I was in L.A., I, I went to uh, the Los Angeles International Film and Video uh, uh, Festival. Um, and then, um, you know, I discovered that we didn't have a Boston International Film Festival. And then I made my... I mean, it was for my first feature film that I made in the U.S. deportation. <laughs> and then um, right after I make my second film, Haul At Me, and that's when we came up with the idea because I had been traveling with different, you know, film festival with deportation and realized that we didn't have an international film festival in Boston. So basically, you know, I gathered together the crew that worked with me and some people in the industry in the arts that are involved in the arts, you know, in general in Boston. And uh, we ended up, you know, going to the city and uh, ask for a meeting and we had the meeting and it all goes on. And then we created the Boston International Film Festival. Actually, in December of 2002, uh, we, uh, we, we register it and have a legal, uh, uh, um, you know, cer- certificate and um, you know, you know, to, to make it, you know, uh, the, legally, the, the status to start the film festival, and then that's how the Boston International Film Festival started. And then we contacted the state office as well, which I think Mick, Mick Romney was the governor at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, Thomas Mayor uh, Menino was the, the mayor, you know, uh, uh, in Boston. So we, you know, work with them and then uh, find out, you know, the best thing to do the best approach and that's how the Boston International Film Festival started. That's amazing. So, so you had the film you wanted to share with people. So you created your own film festival. <laughs> right, basically. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, <laughs> who do you call I, to make a film festival? How does that happen? Like, what do you, what, how do you pull it all together? You just like call different people and. Well, I mean, the film. How do you find the mayor? How do you find the governor's <laughs> contact? No, no, actually, we were having a meeting. Uh, and then we decided to <laughs> say, okay, let's do a film festival. So we were looking for all different kind of names. You know, like the Sunshine Film Festival, Sunrise mm-hmm. Film Festival, you know, Dreamland Film Festival, all different kind of title. 
And then, but I used to have a TV show called International Rhythms on television. And then uh, with that experience that I had before uh, with, with TV show dealing with international music, and then going through film festival, you know, international film festival. And then that's when the idea came up. We were like, wait a minute, do we have a Boston International Film Festival? We went online and checked at that time <laughs> and we find out there were none. And then you did so, it, you took it. <laughs> yeah, and then we said, you know what? We can do a Boston International Film Festival. And everybody was like, what? That sounds big. And he says, okay, let's check with the mayor's office the next day. It was mm -hmm. in, the, in the evening. So we did the next day, we called, we explained what our intention was. And before we know it, you know, they give us, you know, a, a, a meeting. They, they say, you know what, that sounds great, let's meet. And then we go and met with the cultural office uh, at, this, at the mayor's office. And then um, that's how it all started, Will. What a, yeah, what a rich background. You worked on a lot of like shows and movies and you've seen a lot of movies. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Yes, I mean, us. since we started it, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, the festival is, is almost 20 years old. And um, throughout the years, man, we've seen thousands of films, thousands and thousands of films. Mm -hmm. And um, it's such an incredible thing to do. I feel blessed to be in the position to, to, to do that, especially to see people, you know, at the beginning of their career and to sure. see where they are now mm -hmm. that come throughout, you know, what we're doing. And I think this is, you know, this is rewarding, you know, in so many ways. But you've seen thousands and thousands of films, Patrick. What makes a good film and then a bad film? Like, how do you know when to turn it off? <laughs> well, actually, we have uh, screening committees that determines uh, which movies, which I think you attend, Ali. I did work in one of the screening committees, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was a member of the film When festival. you were in Boston, yeah. That's how you, we met. You, you came and sit around the table and, you, and then you saw how we did it. Mm -hmm. We watch the film and then we vote and we go around the table and asking people for their opinions. And then uh, people have the sheets to vote on each movies. Mm -hmm. So we have a big committee of about 35 people uh, that watch the film uh, prior, of course, you know, in previous years. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how it's going to be in, in, in the future now. So, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, but you've we, been, we Patrick. have to wait and see what's happening. You've yeah. seen thousands and thousands of movies over 20 years. I've only seen not that many movies because <laughs> I'm young. <laughs> you know, you've seen more movies than I've been alive, maybe. So it's like, um, can you tell us, like, from all the movies you've seen, what is like the, the, the like, how, what are the things? What's your favorite? You yeah, sure. That's what I want to know. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> My favorite movie, like outside of the film festival circuit or, or in, in general, like, you know, mixed with Hollywood and so on. Anything really doesn't. Like, your all time favorite movie, you know, you, you, you can watch it a hundred times. You'll never get bored of it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that's a very good question. My favorite movie of all time is, um, is a French film uh, called La Grande Vadrouille. Um, it was made before I was born, like what, 1966? Um, that's a movie I can watch over and over again. It's one of my favorite films. What's it called? Um, La, La... La Grande Vadrouille. Um, huh. Yeah, it, it is a French film. So it's like The Great Adventure or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one. That's that's my a Hollywood movie. Give, give us a Hollywood movie. We, we've seen Hollywood that. movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Hollywood movie now. There are so many Hollywood films uh, that I truly like. Um, but like, what's from... your favorite, <laughs> and why is it the School of Rock? <laughs> my, well, it's it's hard to say because there are so many great films. Patrick, are you there? Yes. For some uh, reason. <laughs> yeah. Joking. You gotta oh, tell oh, us. Hey, the, hey. You gotta tell us the story behind this, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are so many great films that I like in Hollywood. You know, mm -hmm. from time to time, I discover films that are just amazing. Um, <laughs> the, the where where the, the the writing is so great. You know, I I like a lot of the Steven Spielberg films, um, especially his very first film, Duel. Um, which was made, I think, in the late 70s. Um, I think something special about that film, it didn't have too many actors, limited actors, but um, the way 
the timing of the script and the number of uh, scenes and 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 how you know the filmmaker keep your attention you know for such a low budget film I, I don't I don't even think it was three hundred thousand dollar budget film um, it was a very low budget film but it was so well made in a very simple way with almost one actor um, that is in the movie ninety percent of the time you know and then you know you have some actors that um, that that step in so I think that's one of the film artistically that really means a lot, you know, to what I've seen uh, in terms of, you know, uh, a great achievement in, 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 in filmmaking. If you haven't seen Duel, I think it's Steven Spielberg's first film. <laughs> okay, check it out. Uh, first feature <laughs> film. I mean, it, to me, it is amazing. All right. And one of the reasons why I... <laughs> this movie came in mind because recently, while everybody's in quarantine and whatever, in, in confinement, and I was looking for a way, can I shoot a movie now with, with mostly one actor, you know, that can be incredible, you know? And then mm -hmm. I, I rediscovered this film and see how amazing, you know, it was. And also I, I, I watched recently Cast Away, uh, mm -hmm. which, which becomes one of my favorite films as I, you know, discover all the things in it where Tom Hanks was in the movie in like what, you know, like a good 80% of the entire film just by himself um, and the way the, the film keeps going you know the timing and the pacing of the scenes and the dialogues and you know clear and how it ended up playing with your emotion at the end and uh, yeah I mean to me those are like you know great achievement in, in, in filmmaking you know mm -hmm. um, I, I mean agree. I like great movies with lots of special effects when you want to escape and uh, watch something that is you know so uh, 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 dreamy, you know, like it is not real at all, you know, that just it, it takes you on that trip, you know, in your mind. I like those kind of movies with special effects, but the movies that really play with your emotion in, in a strong way are the movies to me that are very amazing, you know, um, like there are so many of them that came out recently. Like I said, going from all the classic film to uh, the films today, you know, there are so many directors that I can connect with, mm -hmm. um, mostly the, the, the stories, you know? Amazing. So Love you it. were about to ask me about the picture? Yes. <laughs> we had to get back to it. All right. You yes. know that I'm a huge fan of Jack Black. <laughs> we you know, Joe. Both are, yes. A huge fan. <laughs> yes. How did this happen? Yeah. Well, well, Jack Black, actually, that was the very first year of the Boston International. What? <laughs> he came? Yes, that was the very first year um, he, he came with uh, a movie that, you know, he was the producer of it. Uh, they presented at the festival this year. Do you know which movie? That year. Um, I can't School. remember the, the title, but it was more of a, doc, of a documentary with Randy Credico. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Aurora Katlinger, I think, was the um, director and then he was the producer. So um, this was amazing, you know, I mean, he came to the festival and, you know, it was all with us for like three days and, you know, it just like, it, it was an amazing, you know, experience because we liked him uh, as an actor. And then when he came, um, you know, it was such a blessing, you know, to have him. And then we had another movie, The Last Dance with Patrick Swayze uh, that he made with his wife at that time. Uh, uh, Lisa Naomi or, or, or something like that and um, which was great man you know and, and um, it, it's good to connect with people that are that make a difference in the film industry and then to talk to them and to have an insight uh, from the way they see things in the film industry you know in Hollywood and in general so that was a good thing man it was um, you know, one of the best things that could have happened in the very first year of the process. Well, exactly so how do you how do you like your very first film festival, right? The very first time, you, this is your first movie, right? And you were able to get like Jack Black, right? And other filmmakers to come, to come in. How <laughs> did you have to like call these people to approach them for your film? I guess it was a brand new film festival. At that yes, time. Yeah. I mean, you're right. It was, it was the first year. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so, I mean, we weren't shy about it. Once we decided to start the film festival, we approached every single 
uh, 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 institution in the film industry, whether it's the, the, the agency for actors, whether it's major studios, whether it was, uh, you know, some, some universities, uh, uh, um, you know, in, in the industry, in all the big cities, especially in California and New York. So, I mean, you connect with a lot of people and then we have all different departments, all different uh, group of people doing the research and make the connection and do the introductions. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, it creates results. I think it's all about the team. If you, the, we had a, the greatest team ever. We were young and naive and full <laughs> of passion and, mm -hmm. you know, and full of excitement, you know, fearless, you know. We knock at every single door you can think of, you know. Mm -hmm. No one that are closed, we just keep moving on. We forget. So what is that like? Aren't you scared? So like you're a young guy, right? You're not even in Hollywood, and yet you're going and knocking on every single door saying, hey, come to my film festival, right? And Hollywood people have like a lot going going on. So, but you're not... You no, were... I wasn't scared. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, I wasn't scared. I mean, like I said before, I was in California um, with my movie Deportation. So um, I started to knock at doors way before that. So I have an idea how mm -hmm. things worked, uh, but when you bring a team of people with you uh, that have some experience that are part of it, so it's become not only you, it's become a teamwork. You know, the film industry, it's all teamwork. Whether you're producing a film or anything that you are doing, you rely on a very good team that would go out there and take the necessary steps and do the necessary thing to see results, you know? Um, and one thing that kind of helped me personally is the fact that I know the film industry is based on rejection. So once, if you are afraid of rejection, you're not going to start moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, you can knock at door and people are saying no to you. Uh, you knock at the other door, people keep saying no to you. But you keep knocking until you find the one that open. Yeah. Now, once you find the one that open for you, you have to capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. you know, and keep things moving, you know, that's how it is, you know, Ali, you came to the world premiere of our movie in Hollywood, you know. Yeah, so yeah, exactly, <laughs> okay, so how did you do that? So you were able, like the Chinese theater, right? Chinese theater. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's like one of the biggest, like, you know, theaters, that's where they have the Oscars and stuff. I know, I know. That movie behind you, right? Uh, Assassin Behind the Glass, okay. Yes. What was the call you made <laughs> that was able to get <laughs> that movie on that screen, yeah. Well, I mean, once again, you know, like I said, it's, 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 uh, it's all about your understanding of the, of the business. Mm -hmm. And for us to do the world premiere at the Chinese theater, <laughs> like, you know, this is where the Oscars happen. This mm -hmm. is where all the biggest thing happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, we, we build connection throughout the, through the years, the more movies. I mean, this is my 25th movie, you know? I mean, I make 25 film and plus. So, um, you know, all those uh, on connection and, and how, you know, to deal with uh, other film festival um, and uh, people in the industry, whether it's agencies or uh, major studios, you know, you find out, you know, how things work, you it's know. It's like connections, right? Like, you know, people. Yeah, it's mostly connection. It's, it's mm -hmm. mostly connection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not even about the money. It's about, you know, um, who, who is the major player um that that are making things happen mm -hmm. and then once you go that way you know you find out where the truth is you find out where the open door is you know like i said you know i keep saying this man you will face a lot of closing doors a lot of doors will close on you but uh, the bottom line is to focus on finding the one that will open for you mm -hmm. once you have that kind of approach then you know there's a way for you to move up and uh, do your thing, you know? I mean, I felt blessed when we were there um, at the Chinese theater, um, you know, to do the world premiere of my film, you know, all the actors uh, uh, came and were excited, you know, to have that experience, just to have that experience, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that was a good thing. And uh, it's, it's a movie, of course, you know, that I feel very connected with too, in so many ways and, um, you know, it, it's all about, you know, how you, you approach the business and, you know, don't get discouraged by things. Uh, and I mean, we are living in a difficult time right now and I don't know, uh, we don't know, you know, um, how this will end. 
but we know for sure it will end. Uh, so oh. the best mm -hmm. we can do right now is to prepare mm -hmm. ourselves, you mm -hmm. know, to move forward no matter what, mm -hmm. um, you know, because, you know, I mean, it's so sad, man. Every summer I film a movie, you know, sometimes I would even shoot two movies in one year. And now we stop. That's a lot of movies. Yeah. <laughs> now we're stuck. How hard is it to film a movie? How hard it is? Um, like what, well, what goes into making your like a really good movie because I, I have nothing to do with the filming world <laughs> or the filming industry so i really don't know <laughs> uh, well you mentioned two things uh, making a movie is one thing making a good movie that's another thing mm -hmm. um you, okay you, know, <laughs> you can make a movie yeah so many people can make a movie <laughs> But make a good film. That's something else. <laughs> All right, let's get into the details then. How do you make a good movie? What's yeah. like a really good movie? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to make a good movie, first of all, you need a very good uh, uh, script. You need a very good script that has all the necessary elements that would make it very professional. You know. Um, you know, a good script, a good story to me, have a very strong uh, uh, upfront story involvement, you know, that should happen, you know, in the first uh, one to seven minutes um, from the beginning of the script, I mean, of the movie. And then that your lead characters, um, they must have, you know, they must capture the audience, you know, they should be multidimensional and likable. Um, that go, you know, against the grain that is kind of, you can make it a little risky, you know, to do things that are very creative. And then uh, it, 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 for me, it needs to have some drama, you know, and it, you, 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 you have to, you know, bring it in and out, you know, with humor and element of levity and surprise, um, you know, and then the, you have to balance it, you know, the moment uh, that makes an impact in the film. Uh, 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 the timing and the pacing of, of, of the story. And then it must also have uh, what I would call identifiable characters. Uh, because once it has uh, the identifiable characters, it's easy for the audience to follow uh, uh, the characters and feel the, the characters in terms of emotion. Yeah. And then if the story has uh, some kind of a, um, a, 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 a quest, uh, so some kind of mm -hmm. a, a character for you to root for, you know, for people to cheer, you know, uh, for people to care about, all that needs to be developed in the script itself. And having mm -hmm. subplot um, mm -hmm. in the script is extremely, you know, important because it kind of stretch the, the, the story to make it unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, I mean, once you have a story, the stories that has, uh, um, uh, uh, consequences, you know, um, or, or a sense of urgency, you know, um, is always a, a winning in terms of capture the audience, you know, attention, you know, or, or I mean, for example, you can say somebody has a bomb, they are going in towards a big city to make it explode, and then the lead character is chasing that person to stop it. So once you have those kind of quests, I'm, I'm using this as an example, mm -hmm. but once you have some, something to cheer for the main character, then it kind of helps the audience to stay connected with the script. Uh, that's from the, an action you know, uh, 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 script approach, but it can be at the same time from a romantic approach mm -hmm. where, where somebody is chasing somebody that the audience feels that they would be great together, you mm -hmm. know? Once you have that going on, it's kind of capture the audience um, uh, to, 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 to have a great story. And all of that should be done in writing first before you go to shoot, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, a good script start, um, a good movie start with a good script in mm -hmm. writing first. And, and, and all those elements to me is important. Uh, the dialogue is also very important. Uh, because the dialogue has to be very clever, entertaining, clear, and brief, not draggy. Um, so the uh, it, uh, and the eternal logic. I mean, I can go on and on and on. I'm, I'm a screenwriter. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Man. That's true. <laughs> I want to know, Patrick, in production, what's like the hardest set you've been on? Like, what's the most difficult production you've done? 
Oh boy. The most difficult, none of them have been easy. Mm -hmm. It's always been uh, a struggle, uh, very difficult. Um, unfortunately, the most difficult things that arise from the set is when, when you have disturbance uh, that come your way. If you are the director, for example, um, you have uh, crew members fighting and you have uh, actors that are not collaborating. That's the hardest, that's the hardest part because uh, you can have a great setting and then once people don't get along or cannot follow direction or create all different kind of drama or different kind of difficulties, um, it creates a very difficult atmosphere to deal with. So um, with all- Has that ever happened with you? Oh yeah, all the time. Like I said, with all movies that I made, <laughs> I've always come to face some, some heavy challenges. Mm -hmm. And, but I find my way to deal with it. And it's a natural way. It's well known in the film industry where uh, you work with people you feel comfortable being around, you know? And usually that's how you deal with it. And that's why you would see in Hollywood, a lot of filmmakers, they like to work with some actors over and over and over again because once you find that uh, a true uh, a key player a team player to for you to work with it helps you to express yourself you know and and then uh, that kind of uh, determine who you're gonna work with in the future you see what I mean mm -hmm. so for me it's 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 always been um, you know difficult whenever you bring people so you have to keep bringing people in and as time goes by, as you're making more movies, you bring in the same people you feel you know, comfortable working with, then it makes it easier and easier and easier as you keep on producing. So I would say the hardest part really is those little drama, those little fights uh, that comes along. And one thing that we kind of suffer a lot to is the budget. Um, sometimes if you don't have a big budget, if you have a very small budget, you can uh, come to some restriction uh, that, that make you do things that that's not how you would want to do it, but you just do it to survive mm -hmm. or to rescue your production. Because, you know, uh, it's either you do it or your production sink. Can you give us an example of like, what do you mean? Well, I mean, if you go, for example, you have a scene that takes place uh, in a courthouse. And then uh, the courthouse uh, charging you a lot of money that goes beyond your budget. So it's either you pay the money and you take the money away from some like, to do it that is so cheap and that may not be reality. So this way, you know, you cannot face the challenge. You cannot be able to face the challenge. And sometimes it's painful, but you have to do it you know, and then you ended up doing it. Sometimes it could be a scene where you need the number of cops um, to, to, to use in it if you need involved. So that's kind of squeeze, um, you know, you in terms of your artistic expression from mm -hmm. what you want to do. So you have to go away, you have to go and make decision that is not what you really wanted to do. That's not how you wanted to do it, you know, from, 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 from the, the start, from your planning. But you have to get up, you know, you have to face those challenges and, and do it. And you have a weather. Sometimes you have a scene <laughs> that takes place, it's you, know, you mm -hmm. know, in a sunny day, this person leaves this house. The next day you're filming, you, it's it, you arrive at the mm -hmm. other house. And then when he was leaving, it was sunny. When you're filming for the next day, when he arrived, it's a rainy day. So <laughs> yeah, that, that. you have to cancel, you know, uh, because, you know, you have to face. There are all different kind of challenges that, that, mm -hmm. that would come your way. And then uh, that can make it very difficult. Um, but, you know, once again, you have to be able to work with a good team that would make it work, you know and be, be, be reasonable, you mm -hmm. know, but the budget thing can be, uh, it can be really tough. Um, you know, it can bring a lot of pain um, in terms of achieving what you want to do.
amazing. And um, <laughs> what about distri- distribution? So you have like movies now on Amazon Prime. Deportation is on Amazon. How'd that happen? I mean, I have a lot of movies, mm-hmm. um, you know, out there. You know, I have Against the Jab, who is on, who is on iTunes and uh, um, Google Plus. And mm-hmm. I have a number of movies on Amazon, v- uh, on Vimeo. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So I think the world of um, distribution, which uh, with uh, online streaming, uh, make a world of difference. Um, you know, when they just started my first, fe- my second feature film in the U.S., Haul at Me, uh, was on Netflix um, for, for five years uh, before they start to rotate films. And this is a movie that got there uh, because the movie was distributed by Image Entertainment. So um, I didn't even know the movie was there. So once you get a distribution, uh, well, the movie was everywhere when it came out. You know, we used to have Blockbuster, Still, and, you know, Target and all of them, you know. Mm -hmm. And the movie ended up on Netflix and then Netflix is kind of leading the way these days. Um, you know, where everything, you know, now we have so many streaming platforms online. And which is great because if you are a filmmaker, if you have movies, if you have followers, if you can find your way to market your film um, with all the streaming services, it's a good thing. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the internet is, you know, is flooded with so many films. You would go on any of those platforms. You don't know which one to watch, you know. But at least it's available. Back in the days when you make a film, I would say, you know, early 2000s, in the 90s, and, you know, for you to get a distribution deal, that was the thing, you know. It still is. But at the same time, today, you can make a film. It doesn't have to stay on the shelf. Um, there are ways you can get it out there, which is good. You know, it's just a question of how you, um, you know, how you can market and let people know the movies out there. Mm -hmm. you know which is a very good thing you know on amazon prime alone i have over 15 films so if somebody really want to watch my film there's no excuse you can find it easily Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. um so vimeo i have a lot as well you know and as you go to to the other you know networks you know it's getting uh you know smaller smaller but you know that's a good thing about the world we live in today if you can make a film and have people to connect with it, you know, you, you can manage to get, you know, millions of views. That's true. What about, yeah. what about video games, Patrick? Do you play any video games? No. No? <laughs> I have okay. no history. I have no history with video games. Mm-hmm. I, when I was a teenager, um, I discovered video game and I played it for almost a month. <laughs> and I realized how I was getting addicted to it. What were you playing <laughs> that was so addictive? <laughs> so many. There was, uh, I remember there was, uh, there was a car race game um, that, I, that I used to play. And then, and then it gets to a point, it hit me. I says, wow, as you're spending so much time on video game, you're not being productive. And I was always an artist, man. I always like to express myself. And then uh, now it's over 20 something years. I never touch a video game again. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, I feel like it's a waste of time. You know, if looks- you like video game, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That poster, because that poster behind you looks like him. That poster behind you looks like it's like a GTA, like it's oh, yeah. on the grass. I thought like it could be, it could have easily been a game. <laughs> Yes, yes, it could be. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so what's the next big thing? Next- huh? I'm saying, what's the next biggest thing you're working on? The next biggest thing is, um, you know, we are waiting for, 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 for the world to, um, <laughs> to, to move forward from that freezing stage mm-hmm. that we are right now. Everything is, is stopped right now. So mm-hmm. I have a number, when, I was, when I'm in confinement, I mean, in, in quarantine, whatever, um, I ended up writing on a lot of scripts. I have some script that I'm supposed to work on. And um, actually, there's a short film that is available right now on, uh, on YouTube. We are trying to develop our, our YouTube channel. 
And this movie, uh, we presented at the Boston International Film Festival in 2004. So the movie is 16 years old. Um, and I had a bunch of issues with the film itself, so I had never released it. So, you know, um, when I'm here in quarantine, I just decided to pull all the footages and redo the editing of the film. And um, I redid it. I'm, I'm so happy that uh, we just posted it on, on YouTube um you know and i'm so happy that i did that mm -hmm. you know it is definitely it is a short film um that, that um i felt could be better and by doing the editing again it's kind of you know it's kind of helped me to 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 connect with it of course as a filmmaker i'm looking at it there are things i would do differently um i ended up doing so many film after that movie uh of course you know um you know i grow uh, with experience and so on. But at the same time, I ended up liking it a lot. I'm like, wait a minute. It's so funny, you know, people you, you work with 16 years ago and says, what are they doing now? You know, where are they now? You know? And, uh, and then to find out too, like one thing that is amazing, okay, what was I thinking when I wrote that story? <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, you know, it, it, is, it is amazing. So, uh, it's available out there, and right now um, I have a few scripts. I'm waiting to see what's going to be happening. Uh, we started to reach out to some Hollywood uh, uh, celebrities to be involved in them, and then when the pandemic, you know, starts, you know, we had to put everything on pause. But as soon as everything is on freeze, because right now it's not clear if you're going to shoot a movie even though they came out with some guidelines, but at the same time, I would want to make sure everybody's safe mm -hmm. um, before we can move towards production. And then um, I would go from there, you know? Amazing. Good luck to you and to all your future endeavors. Uh, I hope one day you make it to the Oscars yourself. <laughs> Maybe side by side with our own movie maker right here <laughs> right uh, yes, yes. Uh, thank you thank you so much for coming on the show this was really good was so do you have fun. anything you want to do you want to have anything you want to shout out or let the world know well i would send a shout out to all our fans all our friends out there uh watch our movies on amazon prime uh if you have amazon prime it's free if not you can find them on vimeo you can just type, type the title of the films. You can check my IMDb channel. All the movies are listed there. It's very easy to find. And, um, you know, I can't wait to get on the stage, um, you know, on, on, on the set again, man. You know, it's, it's um, you know, it's a burden. I feel like, oh, my God, you know, when is that, when all that is going to be over, you know. Um, but, um, you know, I, I should be in California by the end of this year. So, um, but we'll see, you know. Uh, thanks for taking the time to have me on the A2 show. Um, so, welcome. you know, Thank you for all coming. the best. You guys are doing a great job, you Thank know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, it's my pleasure to be, uh, you know, uh, a guest on your show. All right? It's, it's, <laughs> it's my pleasure to have you. All right. So, uh, if you made it this far into the video, please subscribe. Uh, you mm -hmm. know what to do. Like, Check mm -hmm. out. Patrick stuff. We'll leave a link to everything in the description below. Uh, I don't know. Have you watched any of our full episodes before? Yes, I watched uh, an interview you had uh, with somebody before. It was interesting. Thank um, you. Well, I then like... you know how we sign out. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to cover the camera and peace. Yeah. <laughs>